Today I have a variety of handcrafted jeans, different shades of blue, some differences and a lot of similarities between all of them. Today we're going to go over how to sew jeans and you'll be able to sew your own jeans in no time. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today is all about sewing jeans. I'm very excited to share this episode with you. And just a disclaimer, it's going to be a little bit long as usual when I prepare these videos that are super comprehensive. It's not something you can do in 10 minutes. And jeans are not a garment that you can sew in an hour. It's not a one hour project at all. It does take a little while to put them together. Not because there's anything difficult about them. There's no complex techniques, more seams than usual. The top stitching for sure can lengthen the process of sewing, but then you have this amazing result. This is one of the jeans I've made. The classic jean has five pockets, two on the front, two on the back patch pockets, and the fifth one is the little coin pocket. Now, the coin pocket, sometimes I sew it, sometimes I don't, depends on my mood. I think it's just a decorative feature. I don't put coins or anything in those little pockets. I always carry a handbag. Others include this type of fly zipper insertion. You can have different techniques to put that on. And at the back, you will always have a yoke, top stitching, and your back patch pockets. Waistbands can be either straight, rectangle, or curved. And then down here below the hips, you can have different types of widths styles there are so many skinny straight flared wide so many types but the main features of the front and the back sort of are very similar between them so i have this pair that's a super classic pair non-stretch denim for example i have a simplified one that is a pull-up jean this fabric is super stretchy but it has similar features here same types of pockets a fake fly which makes it so much easier at the back you also have your yoke your back patch pocket and then a straight leg most jeans have top stitching on the inseam as you can see there and in this case the waistband is wider and you just pull it up over your hips but when you look at it it looks pretty much similar to the one i've just shown you that is not stretched where you actually do need that zipper fly to get in don't think that men's jeans are much different they are pretty much the same this is a pair of jeans I've made my husband. In this case, I did install other details like rivets here on the pockets. This is not something I like. I don't add these to my jeans, but for men, I think it's classic and it's there. Also, I have the belt loops. I only use belt loops when I sew jeans for men. None of my jeans have belt loops because I don't wear belts, I don't tuck in, my pants don't need a belt to stay up, my hips sort of control that, so if I'm not going to wear a belt and I'm not going to tuck in, I'm not going to add the belt loop. Sewing jeans can be super satisfying, once you get over it and you start making a few, I'm telling you, you're going to be so, so motivated to make more because you can control the sizing, you can control the fabric, you can control little details that you are particular about with your jeans. You can see some pattern pieces. There is the front leg, that's the curve for the pocket opening. That is the back leg, that is the yoke, the curved waistbands, patch pockets, items for the fly zipper, the extension and the facing, and the extended pocket bags with the denim shield right on top there. That will go behind that pocket opening there when they're done. We're not talking about sewing a muslin here. This is not a, a video about fitting your jeans. I'm taking that as a given that you will be doing some fitting and tests before jumping into sewing your final pair with denim. In this episode, we're just going over the sewing part of the jeans. And I just want to show you how approachable and how easy it is. There are general steps that you'll see with any jean pattern. Sometimes you can mix them around a little bit, but in general, you would sew your pockets on first at the front, including the little coin pocket or that detail. Then you put your front legs together and sew your zipper fly. Once that's done, that technique of the fly includes the front crotch as well. It will all be included there. And then you have front legs done. Then you go to the back and do your back legs. Once your back legs are done, yoke and patch pocket, everything, you put them together. Then you sew the inseam first. And the reason for that is usually you do top stitching on the inseam and you need the side seams to be free in order to do that. After doing that, you sew the side seams. 
then you saw your waistband and then your hem and then little details like your jean button or rivets or things like that so that is like the general step you can mix it around a little like sewing the back leg first and getting it out of the way I think it's one of the easiest steps that you can just do so if that suits you better you can do that or leave it for after you've done the front that doesn't really matter the important thing is that you have a front and you have a back so we are working with denim here it can be in diverse weights but usually it's anywhere from medium to heavy weight I just want to show you a little bit about the needle the stitch length and what type of thread is more suited to this type of fabric I don't have proper jean needles but a universal needle number 100 or slash 16 I think is a good size needle for this type of heavier fabric we're gonna go through layers and this is the one I use for all my jeans I don't have an issue with it I'm gonna be using regular polyester thread for all of my seams I think it's a really nice strong thread it's just longer lasting than if you use cotton thread in my opinion and then for my top stitching I'm gonna be using top stitching thread this is also 100% polyester and when I do top stitching I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length to 3.5 maybe even 4 sometimes when it's through a lot of layers so that is something I always change as you can see here there is a lot of top stitching and mine looks super neat and it's not because I'm special and I'm a whiz it's all possible with the help of two presser feet that I use so let me show you those during the process you'll see me swapping between these two presser feet that help you get really neat top stitching that's how I like doing it when I want to edge stitch I use the blind hem presser foot and move the needle to the left and then this metal ridge goes against your seam and you get a really, really neat edge stitch. And because we're usually using a bit of a contrast thread, I think top stitching can look really neat with this. And then for the second row that's parallel and a little further in, I'm going to be using my quarter inch presser foot. You can see that metal ridge there is going to go inside the seam and your needle is just going to sew it perfectly. So you're going to have two neat rows. In this first segment of this jean making movie, we're going to go over the front pockets. Front pockets on jeans always look the same. You have this curved pocket opening with two rows of top stitching and you have denim at the back completing the hip area. Now the shape of the pocket bag inside, that is where things can get a little bit different. Although there are very common steps that all pockets have usually when you start sewing your pockets you will get your coin pocket first which is could be a rectangle or it could have that little angle at the bottom that looks like the back patch pockets only tinier can also be curved you can find different shapes of coin pockets that doesn't really make a difference <laughs> You always need to finish the top edge and the edges at the bottom, whatever shape they can be, have that ready. Then you have your pocket bag, which is the piece that goes behind here, and you have a shield. This piece of denim is just a little piece there that is sewn onto another piece of fabric. That's where the coin pocket goes also. So you have your pocket bag ready, and then you have your pocket lining or facing which has the shape of the pocket entrance right there. They go right sides together. You always sew, you trim seam allowances, snip, understitch, fold to the inside and top stitch. Then you put your pocket bag on top. They have the same shape. You sew the edges and serge, and then you baste at the hips. So those are common steps. What changes this side are the shapes of the pocket linings and the pocket bags. So I'm gonna show you three types of pockets inside so you can see what the similarities and what the differences are. Although the general sewing steps are sort of the same. So the first ones I want to show you are from these jeans. These jeans have pocket bags that go all the way to the center, all the way up to the zipper. And there's two pieces, the pocket bag and the pocket lining. Here you'll see a coin pocket and you'll just see how to put it together. So let's go. This next pocket is more classic because there is a little coin pocket on the right hip. This one's a square but you can find other shapes, curves, it doesn't really matter. It just matters that it's small. This one has two notches on the top there. You fold that top edge right sides together matching that notch mark right there. This is going to give you a really clean edge on the top of the pocket. This is the same way you can finish back patch pockets as well or any patch pocket. So having that fold we sew that using the same seam allowance you will to fold in the raw edges of the pocket and we do that on both sides. We flip it over to the other side and we get a really clean edge there. Then we just finish folding the other raw edges of the pocket. Before sewing this onto the pocket shield, I'm just gonna sew the top edge there, do some top stitching to hold that down. Now we can see our front pocket pieces. These go all the way to the center, so they have a slightly different shape. And in this pattern, the pocket shield is called a pocket yoke. It doesn't matter what it's called, just know that it's denim. And on the right hip, you're gonna have that little 
coin pocket that we've just prepared. We serge the edges of the pocket shield or the pocket yoke in this case. So we're just going to go to the sewing machine and sew that coin pocket on. You can do that however you want. Do some top stitching. And then align that on top of the pocket and sew that on so that this pocket piece can just be one piece like that. That's how it looks like when it's done. A little coin pocket on just one side. Having that done, here we can see the front legs. We have the same curved pocket opening that is classic in jeans. Place the pocket facings on top and align that. And the same thing we do with every single pocket we sew it. We trim the seam allowance. We snip into those curves so that we can get rid of the tension before flipping the pocket to the other side. You can't really skip the understitching. That's going to keep this pocket facing inside. I'm using bright red here, so I really don't want that seam. So just extend this seam, tuck the seam allowance under your pocket lining or your pocket facing. It's called differently in different patterns, but it's the same thing. And that's going to keep it inside. Then we pin it along the curve and do our two rows of top stitching. I'm doing one row at a quarter of an inch here. I'm getting some help from my quarter inch presser foot. I'm using top stitching thread. After sewing these curves at a quarter of an inch. I'm going to use my blind hem presser foot with a needle to the left to do really neat edge stitching. Then we are going to take our pocket bag, the one that has the piece of denim sewn onto it, and just place them right on top, right sides together. They're going to have the same shape. And we need to sew this curve here on the bottom. Just pin it along, sew it and serge it. So that closes off the pocket in itself. That's how that looks. So we'll just get that done, sewing and serging. Once that's done, we just need to align the pocket, make sure everything's flat, that whatever notches you have on the pattern match. And we baste along the side seams there to hold the hip area in place and to hold the waist area in place. The same technique, it's just the shape is a little different and this reaches the center front where the zipper shield is. It gives really good tummy support and I do like this type of pocket on jeans. I think it feels really nice on. That's how they look inside. You can see it's caught in the side seam, caught in the waist, but goes all the way to the center where all the zipper business is. And it's got a curve right there. It's all very neat. And this is the type of pocket that you've just seen. Now, there are other types of pockets that also have two pieces, the facing and the pocket bag, but they're tinier, smaller like this. So let's look at one of those. Here on the table you see the front legs and that colorful fabric is my pocket facing. It follows the curved shape of the pocket opening like that and we always do the same thing. We sew them together, we trim the seam allowance, snip the curves and understitch. It's always the same thing. It's just that this pocket facing is a little smaller. It doesn't reach the center front but it doesn't change the technique. After trimming the seam allowance, snipping the curves, I'm understitching. I have the seam allowance tucked in under the lighter fabric and I'm just sewing on the edge and this is always going to keep it super, super neat. And this is a step that is not replaceable. It'll keep this pocket facing inside without being seen. We usually use a lighter fabric. It can be contrasting. After this, we flip this pocket facing to the inside, pin it along the curve and traditional jeans have two rows of top stitching. Easy peasy, I use my press feet to help me along and you get a really nice result. Here are the other pieces we need for the pockets and this is the pocket bag. You also cut it out of a contrast fabric. And right there on top you see the pocket shield and that's made out of the denim. That's going to be what you see behind the pocket opening and we need to serge that edge right there. After that's cleaned, we can sew that on top of this pocket bag and it'll form one piece. After having our pocket bag ready with the shield sewn on, we place it on top of the pocket facing that we'd already sewn to the front legs. They have the same shape. So we just place those right sides together and we sew the bottom curve of these two layers of the pockets and then we base along the waist and on hips and then we have completed front pockets and you can see that that denim area is going to complete the pocket opening there. You can see the curve there with the two rows of top stitching. The pocket is in place. It's not going to go anywhere and you can see that behind the pocket opening you have that piece of denim and that's what the 
pocket she would accomplish. So you see that we're following sort of similar steps even though the pieces can look a little different. So this is how these look inside. You can see there is a fake fly right there but the pockets will be the same if there was a fly there or not. You can see this more, they have a seam that unites both pieces all along this curve that you've cleaned up with the serger and sewn. I wouldn't just leave pockets with the serger only because that's just not strong enough to hold anything that you're going to put inside unless you want a hole. <laughs> so always serge and sew. I would say for men's pockets where they just put wallets and phones and all sorts in there, I would do a double row just to make it more reinforced. So that's how the pocket looks on the outside. It looks just like any other pocket. The only thing different is that inside you have a smaller pocket bag right there. You still have that pocket shield made out of denim. So that is the second type of pocket. This is another pair of jeans and these have an entirely different type of pocket inside, although from the outside it looks the same. The difference here is that it's just one piece. If you look at it from far away, it looks the same, but it's one piece where on one side it would be the pocket facing that would have the shape of the pocket opening. And on the other side, you'd have a completed area where you saw in your shield. So it's similar to the one I've just shown you that in the fact that it's a smallish pocket bag, I mean, it's not huge, it doesn't go all the way to the center. But instead of having a seam that goes all the way that unites two pocket pieces, it's just one. I think it makes the sewing steps a little easier, but most importantly, I find it super comfortable because you have your leg right here and instead of having a bulky seam with a surged edge, you just get a nice folded piece of fabric. So let's see how to sew this. On the example I've got for you, I don't have the coin pocket there. As I mentioned, sometimes I sew them on, sometimes I don't, you know. So just pretend there's a coin pocket there if you really want one. And you'll find a lot of jean patterns have this type of pocket and I think it's a really neat one. Some jean patterns have just one piece for the pocket, so it's like they've joined the pocket facing with the pocket bag into just one piece. One of the sides would have the curved pocket opening and on the top of the other side you would have the hip shape. At the hip edge we would sew the pocket shield which is a piece of the main denim. This is what is going to be visible when we wear our pockets and it's going to be behind the pocket entrance. So we search that pocket shield edge and sew it onto this extended piece. You can see that I'm stabilizing the pocket openings on the wrong side of the fabric and just fusing on a narrow strip of interfacing. This will make sure that over time this doesn't stretch. I am now sewing that piece of denim onto the area that would have been the pocket bag so that what you see behind the pocket entrance will actually be the same type of denim. I've got my front leg fabric right sides up and I'm going to place this pocket opening. I'm going to pin that along there and sew it. I'm going to use a smaller seam allowance, just 3 8 here, making sure I'm sewing on top of that interfacing I had fused on previously. Then I'm going to trim away some seam allowance. You never want more than a quarter of an inch there and because it is curved you need to do some snips as always. Then you are going to turn this pocket piece and understitch. The seam allowance is pushed towards the pocket piece, so underneath the print fabric and that will keep that inside. It is a contrast fabric and you don't want that to be seen. And then I'm going to pin this curve and top stitch. I'm doing first the top stitching at a quarter of an inch seam allowance with my presser foot. That's going to help it be super neat and then I'm doing the one on the edge. And that gives me two rows of top stitching on the pocket entrance as well. Now that's one leg and I'll repeat for the other. Now what you do inside is just fold this pocket onto itself. You'll see that instead of a seam you'll just have a fold and you just align everything on the side seams. Make sure everything matches and you will have a pocket that is made out of just one piece. It has a fold there and you need to align that onto the waist area and onto the side seam. See the fold there? So much more comfortable than having a seam and it's so easy to do. You can see that the side seams of the pockets match and there's a slight curve at the bottom. I've sewn the bottom of the pocket, you can see there and I've surged it. And now I've pinned it along the side seam right there and along the waistline. I'm going to just base that together to make it be one piece. You can see the pocket entrance there, the piece of denim. These were the jeans I was sewing in this example and you saw me putting a little bit of interfacing to this edge here of the pocket. Now, I only did this because these are pull-up pants with super, super stretchy denim, so stretchier than others if you look. 
pretty stretchy so I thought that is a good thing to do because otherwise I was scared that this over time was going to end up gaping and stretching out and deforming but it's not something I would do consistently with any jean that I sew this is how these look inside very nice with that fold right there I really love this type of pocket my husband's jeans have the same type of pocket right there that's just one piece and it's got the fold there and then the seam only at the bottom right here just because these are looser jeans for men, you know, it's not really fitted at the thighs. Sorry, the wind's just going crazy. I did some binding here at the bottom to hold it together. I wouldn't do this on a pair for me if they were fitted jeans because then maybe you could see that. You could see the bulk through the fabric. But for these men's jeans, I thought that was a nice touch to add there. Same technique, same type of pocket. These are another pair of jeans that have the same type of pocket. So I wanted to show you that last step again just to repeat to make it really clear of how these come together inside after you've sewn this section right there we've done the basic sew trim clip under stitch top stitch and it's extended and then you just fold it over onto itself here on the wrong side of the pant has the same curve at the bottom and you'll just get a fold on the pocket super easy pocket to put together and from the right side you can see it all aligns and you just have to baste along the hip based along the top and then your pocket is done once you've got both of them done on both legs then that can just be the completed front piece you can see the flies already inserted there there is another jean pattern that is releasing very soon tomorrow ish they are called the legato jeans from love notions and the legato jeans use this type of pocket that you've just seen where it's just one piece and then you just have a fold on the inside so the difference with these instead of having a curve at the bottom it's just straight so let me just show you a sneak peek. I'm not gonna show too much, you know. So here you can see it goes straight across like that and then you have the fold right there. The other ones I've shown you were a little bit curved right there. But the technique is all the same when you get your legato jeans and you wanna see how to sew the pocket. This is how the third method I've shown you, that is how these are sewn. And I've just used a lighter fabric inside to match my denim. I just used black, you know, nothing crazy in there. So I'll pull back my graphic of the general steps to sew jeans and we can tick the front pockets. Typically now you would sew your fly zipper. Now there are two ways to do it. Depends on how your pattern is drafted. You might find pants that have a separate facing you have to sew onto the, the center front of your pants and then you have your zipper shield. That is a harder way to do it. It has a few more steps and I do have a video on the channel showing you in detail how to sew this type of zipper. I was sewing these jeans when I filmed this tutorial. It looks the same from the outside, right? It looks just like any zipper fly insertion. But in here you have an extra seam because there's a facing that's sewn on separately. So the steps are very, very different and there's a few more steps to that technique. Then you have other jean patterns that on the center front you have a little shape going outwards and that is the facing already on the front piece. So that means you don't have to sew it on. And that is the little detail that makes sewing a zipper like this so much easier. Way less steps and a lot simpler than the other method and from the outside they look exactly the same that instead of having a seam there you just have a fold because the facing was integrated onto the front piece and it just makes it so much easier now yesterday i uploaded a video all about sewing this technique that already has that integrated facing that extension so go back to yesterday's video to see how to sew the zipper if your pattern is drafted in a way that has a separate facing and the harder technique you can transform that center front so that it has that extension there and then you can do the easier technique and i cover all of that in yesterday's video this is how the thumbnail looks so go back to that video to see everything in really good detail lots of graphics lots of things on the screen to help you determine what's right what's left you know there's no way to get it wrong it's just a whole bunch of straight seams so here is our checklist of our general steps pockets done zipper done one thing i can say if you want to you can invert these steps so you can get your two front leg pieces and do your fly zipper first get it out of the way and then do your pockets there's no one that can tell you you can't do that but in most pattern instructions you'll see the pockets done first and then the zipper i think i've seen a few that do the zipper first and then the pockets so there's nothing set in stone. There's no one that can tell you you can't do them inversely if you find one way easier than the other. One reason I would support doing the zipper first is because you just have your front leg pieces, no pockets dangling on. So when you're fiddling and sewing your, your zipper, doing the top stitching, moving all that fabric under the machine, if you don't have the pockets there yet, 
it could be less bulky and it could just give you better access more light access I would say so just have a think about that do them in the order that you think makes more sense for you at the end your result will be the same you will have a completed front leg with pockets and a zipper doesn't matter which order you do them in now we put the front aside and start working on the back which is really fun for the back let's see what pieces we need here we can see the pieces you need for back legs most jeans will have the same pieces so you just have the larger pieces the back legs you will have yokes there that will go sewn on the top the taller section of the yoke is going to match the center of the jeans as you can see there and the shorter section of the yoke is going to be on the side seam. I have two patch pockets there so it's not many pieces that you need to put together. General steps here would be to sew the yokes to the leg then top stitch that seam. I've seen pattern instructions that tell you to top stitch the yoke seam up towards the yoke or down towards the leg. It doesn't really matter just follow along what you see in your pattern and if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world i've seen ready to wear pants have either or so it's not a rule set in stone as well then once you've got your yoke sewn to your leg and top stitched you would sew your back pocket you would sew your back patch pockets that means that you have your patch pockets sort of prepared ahead of time the top edge sewn the edges folded in and then you would sew them onto the back leg this is considering that you've made a test garment and you know where you want your pocket placement to be on patterns you will find dots and marks but those are just references maybe for your body you want them closer to the center or closer to the side or further up so it's, it is something important that you need to determine with your muslin so that it's just easy then to transfer those markings that you prefer onto your pattern and then sew it on correctly it's really really hard to sew your back patch pockets when your jeans are done so don't think you can leave it for the end and then sew them on you have really terrible access there it'll be really hard to do then you would unite your back legs and sew the crotch going over that yoke seam trim that seam allowance serge it then you press the seam allowance to the left and you do your two rows of top stitching and then your back legs would be done now one variation to this order of events that I've given you is that maybe you can prepare your patch pocket and sew it onto the back leg first and then attach the yoke and top stitch the yoke so that is a variation I do sometimes and at the end it doesn't really make much difference in the next segment you will see how all the back area comes together I am going to make the stitch length 3.5 so that it's easily seen. If you make it too small, sometimes it just tends to blend in. And now the other one that's parallel. In order to fold these neatly, you know I love my guiding stitches, whether they be in instructions or not. And this one uses half an inch seam allowance, so I'm just going to sew all the way around with a long stitch length of 4.5 so I can easily remove later. These raw areas need to be finished and I'm going to be serging those. These need to be folded over right sides together where those notches are there. Now that that's folded, I'm going to go ahead and sew that. Now that these are done, you can flip them. I have the pockets here ready, serge the raw edges, I've done the guide stitch, I've all pressed and folded in like that everywhere. And now the top edge needs to be top stitched. Now you know I don't like to back tack because I think it looks bulky so I just leave a long tail. I have a needle that's huge and it makes this so much easier because I just put it through there. Then I just grab these two on the other side and knot them. Look how neat that is. If I did like back tagging, there would be bulky brown there and that doesn't look nice. This is where I'm going to be placing my pocket. I'm going to hand baste this in place so I don't have to rely on the pins. Here you can see the line that I drew to signify where I wanted it to be and that dot there has to be super accurate on both sides so that they have the same distance. So I'm going to use my quarter inch foot. And now I've changed the presser foot on my sewing machine. I've moved the needle towards the left.
I'm gonna sew these two yokes together, match them up at the notches that there is. I have the yokes pinned. Here is the notch that matches the one on the other side and I'm just sewing that. Then you would serge it. Press it down and I'm top stitching everything in parallel rows, one on the edge and then the second row is at a quarter of an inch. I am using different presser feet for this because it just turns out so neat. After repeating the same for both back legs and both yoke pieces, I have attached those together and I'm going to sew the back crotch curve. Search that, I've pressed the seam towards the left and I'm also doing the double row of top stitching, one on the very edge and one at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So here we have our general steps. We can tick the back leg, that's all done. And as I said before, there is no reason why you can't do the back leg first and then start with the front. So if it suits you to do the back first, do that first, doesn't really matter. Once your back is complete and your front is complete, then it's time to put all of this together. So you would have them separately, you put them on the table right sides together and then you would sew your inseam first that is because we're going to top stitch there and it's easier access if the side seams haven't been sewn. So that is generally how you would do it. Then you would go ahead and do the side seams, then the waistband and then the hem. In this segment, let's see how to pull all this together. A lot of long seams. Here on the table we have a completed back and we have a completed front. For jeans you sew these separately and let's have a look at some details up closer of each of them. Here we can see the upper part of the back legs. It's all done, the crotch seam, the yokes, the back patch pockets are on. I think this is the easiest and most fun stage of jeans and there's no reason why you can't do this first. These are men's jeans so you can see the top stitching there is a little wider than I do on my own. I think for men that second row can be 3 eighths of an inch. On mine I do it at a quarter of an inch but that's just personal preference once that's done just put them aside and then you have your front that's already done the crotch has been sewn the zipper is on everything's perfect right there this is what we just call a completed front and we already have the completed back so home stretch I find <laughs> when we flip these around you're gonna see how the pockets look it's the type that's got an extended pocket bag and there's a fold there at the bottom I finished that with binding just to do something nice there is the fly facing and the shield it's all done and so basically you just put the back and the front right sides together usually we do the inseams first because then we need to top stitch and so we need the access top stitch the inseam you need the side seams free top stitching the inseam is sort of optional but I like doing it so you do need to sew the inseam first make sure you match the crotch seams together and then it's a really long seam different patterns will have different seam allowances just follow what you have and then after that you serge it and then if you want to top stitch you, you press the seam allowance towards the front leg. To do the first one on the very edge I'm always using my blind hand presser foot with the needle to the left, my top stitching thread and I just go through this really really long seam. When I go over thick areas like where the crotch seams meet I go slowly and I lengthen my stitch length a little just to get over that bump. And then for the second row as always I'm using my quarter inch presser foot and just going along, going along, going along. The inseam does get friction when we walk and move so I think the top stitching does help stabilize it. After sewing the inseam we can put our pants back together and now we can sew the side seam. Now we have two more seams that are super long, same as all the other seams, sew it, serge it, maybe trim the seam allowance a little smaller if your pattern uses a large seam allowance and then I like to fold the seam allowance towards the back and top stitch only partially just on the pocket area to reinforce. If you look at your ready to wear your jeans you'll see this a lot. So it's just down the edge with the seam allowance pressed towards the back just right under where your pocket bag is and that will reinforce that area as well and it's just one row very discreet. For the waistband some jeans have a rectangle waistband others have a curved waistband. In any case the sewing of the waistband will be similar onto the jeans. The way I prefer to do this is reversed. So I would have my jeans with the fabric right sides out. I would put the inner waistband inside here. The inner waistband right side to wrong side and pin it all along the edge. And separately my outer waistband would have been folded on the lower edge 
by the seam allowance you're using then sew the outer waistband to the inner waistband and then when you flip it over you would have the open edge here at the front where you can top stitch and see what you're doing so that is what I mean in the reverse usually patterns will show you to sew the waistband on here right sides together and then you flip it to the inside and then you're trying to top stitch and catch everything that's loose on the inside it's just a really large curved piece it doesn't have seams on the sides that are there to match the jeans so you always find a series of notches that are going to match the side seams and then some that are going to match this center area. Always remember that one side is a little longer than the other. The one that's longer is the one that's at the back on the right wearer side and on the left wearer side it's just going to reach the center right there. So this side from the side seam here up to here is shorter than from here up to there. Really important that you have those concepts right here so you don't make a mistake and end up pinning it wrong or sewing it wrong. That's why I was really careful to label in the video that you'll see next, the right, the left, all those things, you can put it together. Let's see. I'm doing the curved waistband. If you are doing the straight waistband, the process is the same. You're still going to have two layers. We don't have seams at the side seams for this waistband, which makes it easier to sew. From the center over here to this left area, it's a little shorter. Then from the center over there to the right, it's a little longer. And this is the area where the zipper shield is and it's the layer that's underneath. For now, just put them right sides together and we're going to sew along this upper curve. I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. I'm going to do a snip every inch or so just to relieve the tension. What I have here are the jeans wrong sides out. When you measure here, one is longer than the other and that is why the waistband is made one side longer than the other as well. So the longer side of the waistband is going to go on the right side. This side has the zipper shield right here is the right side so I'm just going to put an R there so you can easily see it and I'm going to take my waistbands and find the right side here. If you were sewing the waistband traditionally you would put the waistband right side together with the pants and then sew it and then the inner waistband is where you would fold it and then it would meet over there and then you're trying to top stitch from here while trying to catch this loose side over here on the inside well I think it's harder that way so I never do it that way I like to do it on the reverse which means that I take my waistband and I put the right side of the waistband against the wrong side of the pants and sew it like this so what you do here is leave a little bit protruding right there and this that's hanging off, this is going to be the outer waistband so let's pretend we've sewn it here this is going to come over, there's the fold and then when you look at it from the right side we're going to do a fold right here that's going to be done already and then when we top stitch we can just catch that it can be super neat and we don't need to worry about anything at the back because that's already been sewn. Make sure you write down which is the right side. The right side is the longer side. I've written an R right there. I'm going to match that here. And I'm not going to sew it yet. What I'm going to do is take this one that's going to be the outer waistband. Do a guide stitch and then fold it up by a half an inch at the iron so that we have that crease done already and it'll be easier for when we sew it and flip it to the other side. I've got the waistband. The one at the bottom is going to be on the outside and has been pressed up. Everything is neat. I've been to the iron and kneaded everything up and now this raw edge is going to match this raw edge. Got my waistband pinned right there. On both of these sides I have that excess hanging off. Now the seam allowance is half an inch. I'm going to have issues with these zipper teeth right here so I don't want to sew in between them I might break my needle and this is something that you might encounter so just to be on the safe side I'm going to remove that and that easy to take out unnecessary teeth so I just take a plier and just pull them out see come out easily Okay, that's what we've just sewn. I've been to the iron and pressed it all very neatly, pressed the seam allowance up towards the waistband. Here on the center front, I've pressed it in like that by the amount that was hanging so that it's nice and straight right here. I've done the same over here. And now I'm gonna turn the pants right sides out. Okay, so here we are, pants are right sides out. And now we need to finish the waistband. What I did here was press the seam allowance open because it's less bulky when you fold it over like this. We're going to meet these edges here, tidy it up under there so it's nice and neat. The fold is just going to cover that seam that we've just done. Get a really neat top stitch right there that you can see and you can control. 
and you don't need to worry because all of this has been already sewn on okay so there it is all neat and hand basted it's looking very nice so i'm gonna top stitch all the way around i'm gonna start somewhere on the back and just edge stitch when I get to the center, I'll pivot, go down and across, and it'll just be a really nice long seam. After the waistband is done, you can take a breather because you're basically done. All you need to do is the hem. Usually you would fold it up, usually half an inch, twice, and you would use your top stitching thread. If I have a denim with a really contrast top stitching thread like that, I like to do a little trick so you can't see any going back and forth to reinforce where I've sewn the hem. So let's just see that little trick. One of the last steps is the hem and you can find different hem allowances. Usually you do fold the hem up twice. If I'm using a very contrasting thread to my denim, I don't like to reinforce and go back and forth. What I do is leave a long thread and just use a large needle to put my thread through. And then I just push that towards the back right there. I'm really careful to stop exactly where I started sewing. And then I do a little knot at the back and then the seam at the bottom looks Looks really really continuous and you can't really tell where you started and you stopped usually if you're sewing a regular zipper fly and it's not with buttons you would just have one button to deal with and one button hole it's right here on the left wearer side the same side that has the top stitching and then just one jean button that is usually the type that you hammer in although if you don't have a jean button like this so it's really firm go ahead and use another button don't stress over that look this one has a nice wooden button so don't stress if you don't have a jean button, just get a button on there so you can close up your jeans. So let's see how to do that. I want to check the size, so I've been testing a little bit to see the size of my buttonhole. Do my best to center it. the width of this waistband and getting the needle right in the center. This little tool here has this circle and that's a little bit sharp and that makes the opening for the button. And this is a metal base. And then I have my jean button, which is really pretty <laughs> with the thing that goes at the back. So I'm just gonna put this metal base under where I want to make the hole. I have my little red dot there. And now I'm gonna take this and put it through, then get my button and push it through and then hammer it in. So now it's really nice and secure. At the very end, you sew on your belt loops. I do have sewing footage of how to put together the belt loop piece and everything. And the only example I have are my husband's jeans. You know, men, they do need that belt. They're usually more sort of straight, rectangle shaped. So there's no hips actually to catch the pants. They just end up falling if they don't have a belt. So yeah, it is sort of really important. And you do bar tacks on the top there, on the bottom. My husband likes extra belt loops, so you would usually just have this one and that one, but he wanted extra here on the center, so I just had to make two extra ones and sew them at the very end. And then at the back, you would have some here on the sides and one at the center back. So instead of having five here, I have seven. And I guess it's got to do with the length of his belt, I don't know. It, it, it was his customization that he requested and if I'm sewing, why not? <laughs> but all of my jeans don't have them. I just don't think they're decorative. I'm never going to tuck in. I'm never going to use a belt. So just being practical and applying what I need for my life. And if I'm sewing my own jeans, I'm not going to sew the belt loops on, but you definitely can if you want to. It's just a really nice long piece. You serge one of these long ends, you don't need to serge both of them. So take the raw long end that hasn't been serged and fold that in first by about a third. And then take the edge that's been serged and fold it on top and that's going to cover it. That's all you do. And then you just pin this along the whole length of this long piece. Now all you do is top stitch on each of these edges. And by doing that, you're going to catch everything. If you're using a contrast top stitching thread, I would use the same one I'm using for all the jeans and just go ahead and sew down one of these long ends down one of the other long ends and then the pattern piece will have the marks where you just cut them 
So you would usually have two around the pocket area, not right on top of the pocket opening, but around that section. And then you move over to the back and you have another two and then you have one in the center back. That's where usually you will find your five. Just fold the edges down and top stitch them there, right against the edge of the top of the waistband and then further down. Usually you use bar tags for that and that's how you can get them all sewn up. When I start, sometimes I just get all the little details prepped, all the pockets prepped so that I don't have to worry about that later. So here I have the pockets already done. Done. These are one piece pocket bags, the shield is on, the little coin pocket is already sewn on and that's ready to go. I don't have to worry about doing all of that in order specifically if I can just get all these things done at first. Then these are the pieces for the zipper, I've got the facing, I've done some binding there just for decoration. My zipper shield is already prepared and ready to go. I've also done initial top stitching on the back patch pockets. The top edge has been folded twice and top stitched. The other edges have been pressed and folded in. So I can just have it ready for when it's time to sew this onto the back legs later on and then on the side I have my waistband this particular waistband is interfaced and then the belt loops have already been sewn and top stitched it's all done so I can use them at the very very end maybe you want to do this get all the little details done and out of the way and just have them ready so then you can just start assembling the main pieces I find it easy to approach jeans this way I hope this jean movie was helpful remember this video can help you put together any jean that you're sewing you're gonna have individual differences with patterns like seam allowances maybe maybe the order of some steps are gonna be a little bit different but you can see the general order of events where you put the front together you put the back together maybe the shapes of the pocket bags inside are gonna be slightly different but I've shown you three ways that you'll probably see these front pockets come together you have all the options there already the back that's always the same the fly can be done in two ways. I do have tutorials on the channel showing you how to do them two ways. One harder one, one easier one. So I think if you just keep this as a reference and come back to it, you'll be able to put together any pant pattern that you like, including pull-up jeans that just have a waistband without a zipper because they typically have the same type of pockets on the front and the back. So I hope this is a good resource for you. I'm excited to share with you my two newest right here, sneak peek. I have a gray and a blue denim jean to share with you in the next video, which will be all about the new Legato jeans from Love Notions. This video here is definitely going to help you put them together. <laughs> I even filmed the fly zipper tutorial using the Legato jeans and the curved waistband. A lot of resources here on the channel to help you put your jeans together. I work really hard to give you amazing content, so don't miss it. Make sure you subscribe, tap on the bell, so you do get notified when I upload new content. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.